How you doing? It's Andrew. Today I want to teach you how to find the inverse of a function on a certain uh, domain. So here's the function that we have to find the inverse of, and then this is the domain. Turns out that when we're finding the inverse of the function, just disregard the domain for now. All right. So we're going to follow a simple of uh, three to four steps. It's very easy. Anywhere you have an f of x, what I want you to do is I want you to rewrite it as a y. That's all you're going to do. First step. Okay. Then what you're going to do is everywhere you have a y, you're going to write x. And everywhere you have an x, you're going to write y. So you're basically kind of flip-flopping the x's and the y's, more or less. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this equation and you're going to solve it for y. Okay. Solve it for y. So if I have to solve this equation for y, I have to get rid of that. Uh, what happened to the minus 3? Yeah, that's a good question, right? Minus 3. There you go. Okay. So we got to solve this for y. So what we're going to do is we're going to first add the 3 on over, right, to the left-hand side because we have to isolate the y all by itself. And we always get take care of addition and subtraction if we have that first. So it's going to be x plus 3 is equal to now y plus 1 squared. Now to get to, at the y, we're going to have to get rid of that square. So we have to now take the square root of them both sides. Okay, so the square root then of x plus 3 is going to be equal to y plus 1. Remember, it just gets rid of the square there. And then we can easily solve this now for y, just subtract 1 from each side. And it turns out that this is going to be x plus 3 minus 1 is equal to then our y. All right. And that's basically it. I mean, that's the inverse function. So just to clean it up a little bit, instead of writing then our y at the end, all you're going to do is instead of writing the y, you're going to replace it with an f of x. All right. But you're just going to write a little minus one on the top just to denote that it is the inverse. And then you're just going to copy basically everything else. All right. So this is just x plus three minus one. Notice it didn't really even matter what the domain was up here. I didn't even use it. Okay. But all I know is that if I had to find the actual domain of this inverse function, just remember what you're thinking about is you cannot have a negative number under the radical over here. And the lowest value you can have under a radical is going to be zero, assuming you're not using complex numbers. All right. Assuming you're not using imaginary numbers. So what value of x would make this whole term underneath that radical go to zero? Well, that's easy. That's just negative three, right? So the real domain of this thing is going to be from negative three, and it can become definitely much larger than that. It can go all the way to infinity. All right, if you need help with domain and range, well, specifically we're doing domain here. Uh, we got tons and tons of videos on our channel. Just go to the math pre-calculus section, and I'm sure you'll have tons of examples there to solidify your understanding. Um, but that's it. And if we notice this given domain is contained within the overall domain of the inverse function. All right. And what happens if it wasn't? Uh, not nothing really. I don't. I don't think I'd change anything. I, I might just further define where it isn't defined then and where it is. But yeah, I wouldn't really just disregard the domain. Make it easy on yourself, right? How you doing? Good. I hope so. I hope this video helped. I hope you're having a nice semester. Um, probably a little bit, maybe about a month in or so, depending upon the class. And yeah. Hope everything's going well. I really do hope these videos are helping you. We have thousands of solved problems out there. Check out our channel. We're building a website. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff to help you through your class. We really want to help you. We want to guide you through. All right, it's complex enough. It's hard enough. Ah, complex, right? Complex numbers, I said before, no pun intended. That's as funny as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't going to get funnier than that. But tune in for more laughs. Okay, Andrew out.